Hey everybody, James Jaguar, Tap Response, and my daughter Heather here, my favorite daughter. Yeah. And um, so, uh, as many of you know, um, Marilyn has undergone some recent health issues. Um, and you jump in where you want. So basically, she had, back in the day, like she quit smoking like five years ago. Uh, five or six. Okay, and so just she was just like, okay, I'm done with this. And boom, cold turkey quit, boom, she was done. And then uh, about uh, a year and something ago, she got a knee replaced, which was she needed. Then she got another knee replaced. The first one went very smoothly. The second one never really healed up right. There was something wrong. They replaced it again. So I jokingly say her, th her third knee replaced. Um, and, th and then complications from that caused her to have two blood clots in her lungs. And she almost died. Like she, the doc said, 50-50 chance of survival at this point. And if she had still been a smoker, she would have died. Um, so since then, uh, yeah, um, you know, like congestive heart issues and things like that, she's been steadily losing weight and um, eating right and stuff like that since she's been out of the hospital. And she has recently started what we hope is her full recovery. Yes. So explain what she needs to do and what she has started doing or what, what, what she's going to do, whatever. So the doctor has basically told her that she had to do some kind of uh, pulmonary rehabilitation. And on that list was strength training, which is really good for it. And we're like, hey. She's a strength training we, coach. We know somebody that can help you with that. So uh, she, we, I started talking to her. She basically had to go and they checked her heart to make sure that she was cleared to start mm -hmm. working out. So we did that and they cleared her. And so now uh, our hope is for her to come in three times times a week and we're lifting weights we're starting kind of slow and steady and slowly mm -hmm. moving up um basically either decreasing some rest time or uh, increasing weight we always just try to do more right so um, so so here is heather and Marilyn doing that stuff talking about that stuff and um and and we what we hope is that the beginning of her full recovery yes First of all, uh, for those of you that, that don't know me or don't recognize me, uh, my name is Marilyn, and I've been here with Tactical Response for going on 15 years. And then I have my friend here. Hello, Hello. I'm Heather. I'm James's daughter. <laughs> and she is going to be helping me uh, get rehabilitated from this uh, massive uh, experience that I had two months ago. Uh, I started out having to have a knee replacement redone. That was on the 27th of July, and uh, I felt great. I mean, I woke up uh, thinking uh, I have finally got my knee fixed. I was prepared to go home the next day, and uh, about 3 o'clock that next morning, I woke up, and I couldn't breathe. My chest was hurting, and, of course, I called for the nurse, and their first response was, I was having a heart attack. Well, uh, all I knew was that I felt like I was going to die that day. It was a real bad experience. And uh, long story short, in a matter of about an hour, I was airlifted to St. Thomas Hospital in Nashville. At that point in time, they ruled out that it was not a heart attack, but I had had two blood clots. Um uh, that had passed into my lungs. Now, for those of you that know me, I had smoked for 42 years. So between the two blood clots, the COPD, uh, my lungs were in terrible shape. Well, I stayed at St. Thomas for about five days and they put me on several different things. Uh, of course, the first thing was a blood thinner and then they started me with a regimen of inhalers and different things like that, and they sent me home. I got home. I was home for basically 36 hours, and then I got to where I couldn't breathe again. And at that point in time, I was taken back to the hosp local hospital here in Paris, Tennessee. They determined that the fluid was building up so fast on my lungs that I needed to go back to Nashville and at that point in time, that's when they removed a liter of fluid from my lung. Now, that's not a, that's not a fun experience, but let me tell you, immediately I could breathe. It, it was like the answer to my prayer. I stayed another three or four days. 
come home, stayed at home that time two days. Now, this is all happening in the month of August. And believe you me, it, it was a blur. But uh, the same thing happened again, and this time I went back to St. Thomas, and another liter was taken from my lungs. Well, at that point in time, the, the doctor come in and told me and my husband that... Uh, I was very lucky because I had had a 50-50 chance of surviving. Well, people, I'm here today. And what I'm going to start today is a new recovery process and where I am going to take my lungs, which are supposed to be at 80%. The doctor told me a week ago it was at 37. Uh, I have been cleared with, uh, from the heart part of having a heart attack. But I do have heart failure. So I have this going on in, in my life right now, but I am going to be positive. And that's why I've brought Heather in with me today. Because Heather's going to help me get my strength back in my lungs and make me be the kind of functioning human being that I want to be. So Heather, you want to tell them a little bit about what you're going to do for me? Uh, yeah, so today we're going to go into the gym, and um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start on just, we're going to have a bench set out, and we're basically going to take you through like squats and presses and some deadlifts, and what we're going to start is we're going to have you start just sitting down and standing up on a bench today, and we're going to do three sets of five of those. Um, and we're going to go as long as we can without our oxygen, but as soon as we need oxygen, it's going to be right there or we're going to grab it as soon as we need it. Um, and then we're going to do some presses and we're going to do some deadlifts and the deadlifts are probably going to start up pretty high on the leg, higher than, um, the normal deadlifts. You come, it starts off the ground. This is going to be elevated some. And, uh, again, as much as we can be off the oxygen while we do it, we will, but it's always going to be there. Um, every time that we go into the gym, we're going to just try to do a little bit more and use a little bit less oxygen. And we're going to do this until hopefully we can do it mostly without the oxygen. And hopefully we can, we're going to eventually work this weight for the deadlift until it's on the ground. So you have a full range of motion and you can pick it up off the ground and then we'll start adding weight to make it heavier until we get you really strong and where you want to be. Well, it sounds like to me I'm going to be busy, mm -hmm. but let me explain something to you. The doctor told me that there were several things that I could do. Of course, number one was to never go back to smoking, which I have been one of the lucky ones. Uh, in the six years that I have quit, I have never lifted up another cigarette. And that was 42 years of smoking two packs a day. So people, my friends, you can do it. You really can. The next thing I have to do is I have to get myself on a good cardiac diet. And that means my vegetables, my white meats, and all that stuff. And Heather's going to help me with that because she does a lot of the nutrition and stuff for us, too. She really studies hard, and, and, and she knows the things that we've got to do. The other thing that he told me was, of course, to lose weight. You know, hey, we all need to lose weight, I'm sure. Some of you skinny minis out there don't, but... Maybe you need to put on a few pounds, <laughs> but I need to lose weight. And then I've got to get my lung capacity back. Because let me tell you, living on oxygen is not a fun thing to do. I'm very lucky because of some people here and everything. I have an Enagent machine, which helps me. Uh, it's a little compact machine. And every morning I get up. And you know how women, you, get, you put your lipstick on and you uh, put your makeup on and you brush your hair. I make sure my battery's charged because that oxygen is going to get me to the car and then it's going to get me into the office. I'm back at tactical response now, uh, but I'm kind of on a limited. There's certain days that I can stay here for four or five hours and I get real tired. And then there's other days I'm here six or seven. And I'm very fortunate to be able to work at a place like tactical response where I have James and, and all the, his family and friends and stuff around here that kind of keep an eye on me. And uh, that means a lot. But anyway, I'd like for you to be with me on this adventure. Just like you were with me when I quit smoking. Because having support means a whole lot. 
And uh, if you have any questions, hey, you know my number. You can call me. And I hope that this will help people out there just like me. Um, Heather's got me set up with a, a real good uh, routine. Uh, I don't want to tell you that it was easy uh, because uh, the recovery between the different sets uh, was a little difficult, but it also helped me with my breathing techniques. You know, um, they say you smell the flowers and you blow out the candle, and that helps uh, make the flow in your lungs a lot better. Uh, Heather really worked with me. Uh, she's patient. Uh, she understands, you know, that uh, that I'm, I'm scared, <clears throat> uh, a little nervous, and uh, but she did real good, and I'm real proud that I made it through the first day. Um, I, I didn't know if I could or not, but I knew I was going to give it my best shot. And um, so um, I'm going to say yay me today because mm -hmm. I did a good job. Yeah, no, I think you should. It was awesome. Thank you, Heather. I do appreciate you working with me. And like I said, uh, if there's people like Heather out there and you need the kind of help that I had, then go for it. Don't be afraid. You know, the hardest step is walking in that gym. And I think that's the truth, whether you've got a breathing problem or you just want to start a physical fitness program. Yeah. They just So thank you, Heather. Yeah. I'm, I'm kinda looking forward to, to Wednesday. Yeah, I'm happy to help. I'm excited. <laughs> so now that you've spoke to Marilyn and she started working out, like mm -hmm. she did her um elliptical I mean, uh sorry, uh treadmill the other day. Yes. And did not need oxygen or anything like that to finish her workout um, i don't know i wasn't here when she I, did I was the here treadmill. Okay. i was here and I was she didn't need it then she either? did not oh, need oxygen to finish the treadmill so so what what do you have to say about how you think it's going so far uh, i think it's going great uh i mean now just the fact that she was able to finish monday and tuesday without her oxygen she didn't need it the whole time i think is awesome mm -hmm. and now we just have to work on going longer and longer without it and i think that she's going to do great Marilyn is a fighter she has the right mindset and i think that she'll make a full recovery and it's funny the oxygen thing um i just was trying to buy one for her. she said she told me while she was in the hospital she needed one and so i started looking for one to buy i'm just going to get it right you know that's what you do and i had to have a prescription to get an oxygen machine. And I'm like, who am I going to get a prescription from? And I posted up on the forum that I was looking for one on, on, on Facebook, the, the alumni forum and guys started finding them. I'd, I'd looked for one that was, you know, uh, used or whatever the case may be, but the guys dug one up at substantially less than what a new one would cost. And then everybody started donating money. Mm -hmm. And so hundred percent of this oxygen machine was paid for without anybody even asking. That's, how important Marilyn is to this company and to these people. Um, and I, and I mean like Marilyn's part of our family, like yeah, yeah, she works here, but she is our family. I mean, if, if something happened to Marilyn, it would be like just a close relative, something happening to them. I mean, she is, she is integral to my life. Even if this business closed down, Marilyn would be right beside me. I guarantee you that guarantee you that so we 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 want her to we want her to to, to to reach a full recovery and uh and and man we are all pulling for her and and if you guys you guys that know Marilyn, if you don't mind if you just I, even if you don't usually comment just like hey we're pulling for you Marilyn. go Marilyn. something like that uh uh, she's got a positive attitude, but we want to make sure it stays up, stays positive. And we don't know how much of that's a mask either, that she's just talking, yeah. talking a good game. So if you don't mind, cheer for her a little bit. What else? Um, I mean, that's all I really got. Other yeah. than, um, the only other thing that I guess I would add is we're also trying to look at different ways that she can eat a little healthier. Mm -hmm. And so we've discussed uh, about what kind of meats are best and some vegetables and fruits that we can throw in there because that's kind of what the doctors have told her is that she needs to keep working on that too yeah yeah absolutely yeah. all right uh we will report back james yeager and heather with type response reminding you that your responsibility to be ready for the fight the fight of your life never ends <laughs>